makes a good opera? You know, opera is such a fascinating art form because truly it combines so many other art forms. Uh, and so it's hard to point to just one aspect of it to say that is what makes it great. Is it a perfect uh, you know, performance by an extraordinary singer? Uh, is it his or her ability to act extremely well? Is it the lighting? Uh, is it the, the scenic design? Or any other component, the beautiful orchestral playing? And it's, so it's very hard to point to one component of what makes an opera great or a particular performance great. And I think that's what makes opera so intriguing to those who, who love to uh, experience it, is that it is really the combination of so many different art forms and the coming together of so many incredibly talented people. Uh, you know, it's one of those things that has to, has to really work well, both in terms of timing, in terms of preparation. Rehearsal is obviously critical to that. We have about a four week rehearsal period uh, and we are so fortunate that we were able to attract so many extraordinary professionals from all over the country and all over the world. And when you put that many talented people together, I tell you, magic happens. Was there a moment or a, a seminal moment for you in your love of opera? My grandmother was an opera singer. She trained um, and she sang to me literally from the first day of, of, of being alive. And I learned all the Puccini arias from her, um, and that really planted the seed for a lifelong of, uh, passion for the art form. Uh, growing up, I played piano. Um, I was quite serious as a young person uh, studying classical piano, although I, I suffered from terrible stage fright, so I knew that oh. wasn't going to be uh, a future for me. Um, but I was very fortunate in that I was able to really cultivate uh, my love of music as a, as a young person, uh, by attending performances, uh, mostly at the Metropolitan Opera, uh, with my mother, who is a subscriber. And growing up and traveling, I was always the, the young person collecting classical CDs and attending classical music performances uh, in Europe and other places uh, during my, tr my travels. So it was really something that I knew from a very early age that was my, my great passion. How do you find a way to get other people to love opera? Well, I think that there are so many points of entry to really discover the beauty of opera. Um, you know, some people approach it because they love music. Uh, others approach it because they love theater. And so I think there's really something in it for everyone. Uh, sometimes people feel a little intimidated, um, but I think that's just a preconceived notion of what the art form is or is not. Um, basically, the origins of opera are very much uh, in line with musical theater. Uh, and it was a popular form of entertainment for centuries. If you look back in the 17th century in Venice, it was a popular form of entertainment. And even moving through history, opera really was uh, entertainment for a broad, pop for a broad public. Uh, and so I think um, today one of our challenges is to continue to demystify opera and continue to find things that are interesting and appealing and attractive from the experiential point of view, and particularly for people who've never been to the opera before. How are you reinventing the art form with that in mind? Well, I'm not so sure it's reinventing the art form. I think it's always pushing the boundaries um, and really looking to be innovative uh, and creative, and also to tap into younger energy, whether it's through composers, creative teams, or the artists themselves. I think that there's so much talent out there, and the Santa Fe Opera truly has always been a springboard for so many of those young, talented people who then go on to great careers and work at major opera houses all over the world. What are some of the examples of exploring or expanding upon opera as an art form? Well, we've just announced a series of three commissions, uh, that is new works that will have their world premiere at the Santa Fe Opera. Uh, the first one will take place this summer. It's called The Thirteenth Child, based on the Brothers Grimm fairy tale by a composer named Paul Reuters. And commissioning new works is really critical to keeping the art form alive and relevant and also to pushing its boundaries. Uh, some of the elements that you'll see when you come to The Thirteenth Child this summer, uh, particularly having to do with the scenic design and the use of projections, uh, is something that is truly state-of-the-art and cutting-edge technology. So there are ways to really keep the art form fresh, 
Uh, oftentimes it does entail the use of technology, but really engaging talented composers and talented artists to produce new work that's never been seen before. The second commission uh, that we've announced, which will take place next season, is based on the play M. Butterfly by David Henry Huang. Um, and the young Chinese-American composer Huang Ro, whose work we featured a few years ago called Dr. Sun Yat-sen, mm -hmm. has written that work. We have commissioned him to do that piece. And again, here's a great example of where we are continually keeping the art form fresh and alive by bringing new works to life. And also on subject matters that are more topical or relevant uh, in our day and age. And that third commissioned uh, work that we've announced is for the 2021 season, and it's by John Corleano, uh, a composer well known for his Red Violin Suite from the movie Red Violin, and also, of course, for his opera, The Ghosts of Versailles. Uh, and this particular work, which is fascinating, the uh, librettist is Mark Adamo, is based on Bram Stoker's Dracula, um, with certain references to uh, Euripides uh, and uh, the Bacchae. Um, and so again, it's really a piece that I think will appeal to young people, to new people, uh, people who are new to, to the art form. Um, and I think that's one of the ways that we really need to continue uh, to attract new audiences, to build new audiences, and to keep it fresh and alive. And of course, there's a place for the new, and there's a place for uh, the more traditional works. And those, and those are works that we also seek to approach with, new, with a new perspective and in new ways as well, to keep them fresh. You're also commissioning operas aimed at sort of new audiences, younger audiences that will be shorter operas. It's called Opera for All Voices. And the series of these commissioned works, which we will um, unveil the first of later this year, um, is called uh, Sweet Potato Kicks the Sun, and it features a beatbox artist. Beatbox and opera. Beatbox and opera, exactly. <laughs> uh, when we announced the piece with this particular beatbox artist, Nicole Paris, our Facebook uh, hits went through the roof. So we know that people are interested and intrigued by these new works, and particularly when they speak to uh, younger audiences, uh, more diverse perspectives, uh, and so again, here's an example where we're really trying to keep opera relevant and introduce it to new people and younger people, and also experiences that are appropriate for families. Um, these works are generally going to be, let's say about 60 minutes in length, and the productions will be very nimble, so they can be packed up and moved, and uh, this particular opera will then become part of our spring tour, uh, which will travel around the state of New Mexico. And eventually, we hope, it will also travel to other opera companies throughout the country. Is it ever a, a challenge to keep your audiences that you have, who might like, you know, La Boheme or something more traditional while you're bringing in beatboxers or <laughs> well, you know, new works based on the Brothers Grimm? There's really something there for everyone. There are beloved works like Madame Butterfly or La Boheme, uh, Cosi Fan Tutte, uh, Next Year Barber of Seville, that people just continue to adore. I mean, the music is so gorgeous. And next year, we're particularly thrilled uh, to do a Wagner's Tristan und Isolde, mm. which will be our first time in 30 years doing a work by Richard Wagner. Uh, and also our very first production of Rusalka by Dvorak. Uh, so you can see there's just this tremendous list of works that will fit into that sort of third and fourth slot as we, as we term it in, 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 inside at the Santa Fe Opera. How do you carry this forward? What's the future for the Santa Fe Opera? The first and most important thing is to honor its legacy. And I think that uh, both John Crosby and Richard Gaddis and Charles McKay had extraordinary uh, vision and really left an indelible mark uh, artistically. And so it was really extraordinary to look at what they were able to accomplish and also to look at opportunities to build on their accomplishments. In the case of uh, John Crosby, who championed the works of Richard Strauss, um, there are a couple of works by Richard Strauss that we have yet to do. Uh, and I think those will be interesting to look at. In the case of Richard Gaddis, there are operas by Benjamin Britten and other composers who he championed, likewise, that have never been performed at the Santa Fe Opera. And in the case of Charles McKay, he was really a champion of commissioning new works, and particularly by American composers. And I think that's something that we absolutely are continuing to build on, and we're doing that right out of the gate. So what would you like your legacy to be? The first is really to find better ways to connect with our community. 
I think that there are ways that we are beginning to do that, whether it's the Opera for All Voices program in terms of these new commissions that will travel throughout the state of New Mexico. I think it's really important to focus on our education and community engagement programs. Uh, being the father of two young kids who are growing up um, in Santa Fe, uh, it's really important to me that our education programs are as good as they can be. So early on, I, I made a pact with myself that I would try to experience every single one of our education programs uh, in the schools and in the communities in this first year, and uh, really to see what they're like firsthand. Um, I also think that there's an opportunity to look at works in the Spanish language uh, and really ways that we can better connect the art form with the community of New Mexico. Uh, every year, if we look at our statistics, about 40% of our ticket buyers are from within the state of New Mexico. And I think it, we need to continue to c cultivate those audiences long into the future. What do you love about opera? Why is it so important to you? The human voice, when set to music, is perhaps the most compelling thing known to man. When you take some words that are just spoken, for example, uh, they have a certain meaning. But w as soon as you set those words to music, they come alive in an extraordinary way. And I think opera, to me, represents the ability to convey the greatest meaning through music, through words, and through action, because it is also then set in a theatrical way. Um, and, and, and it's the combination of all of those things at once that truly make it one of the most remarkable human achievements. Well, Robert Maya, thank you so much for coming and talking. Well, with it's us. been my pleasure. Thank you for having me.